Welcome back to the next video in my Box to Board series for Monty Games Firefight 2nd Edition. If you've watched the last two videos, you should have your minis prepped and ready for painting. So now I'm going to show you a simple, quick and effective paint scheme to get your enforcers looking ready for battle in no time at all. Keep watching until the end as if you're not a fan of the colours I've chosen but want to still use the methods I show, I've got some alternative colour schemes along with the paints I used. If you're finding these step-by-step -step videos helpful, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the series. Without further ado, let's get painting. I'm going to paint these three models to show you my method. An assault enforcer, a peacekeeper and a jet bike. This should show you how to complete all of the enforcer models in the starter set. To prime the model and also to get the main base colour down quickly, I'm using Governor Green Matte Primer by Colour Forge. I can really recommend their spray cans as they leave a great matte finish and are also colour match to Citadel paints too if that's important to you. You could just prime them black and apply a green paint by hand if you want to but this will seriously speed up the whole process and I'm going for a fast finish here. Next I take Elysian Green by Citadel and I'm going to dry brush over all of the models. If you've never dry brushed before we're going to take either a specific dry brush or a cheap makeup brush and just dip the tip of the brush into your paint. Now wipe most of the paint off onto a paper towel as we just want to put a light dusting of paint onto the raised areas and not completely paint over the base green colour. The trick is to lightly drag the brush over the model so it hardly leaves any paint on it so that you can gradually build up the effect as it's easy to add more but if you just put it on too thick you're better off wiping it off the best you can and priming the model again. Do this across all of your models until you start to get a noticeable brighter green highlight on the sharp edges and the raised areas while still keeping the darker green base colour. Once you've done them all they should look something like this. It's a good idea to paint them in small unit sized batches as it helps you to keep the overall coverage the same across the unit. Next I take Corvus Black by Citadel as we're going to paint the under armour areas. I like to use a wet palette when painting as it allows you to thin down and control the consistency of your paints. You can make these yourself from things you'll find at the supermarket and I've linked above the video I made showing you how to do this. Alternatively you can just purchase one as they're not that expensive and I can recommend this one I use from Army Painter. There's a link in the description to where you can purchase one for yourself. As I said I'm going to paint the areas that we might describe as under armour. So the lower torso, the joins in the armour panels at the hips, the back of the knees, the gloves and the neck for example. This is more to break up the one big block of green colour and quickly add some visual interest to the model. Just try and be as neat as you can but if you do go over on any green areas you can touch it up later. Do the same across the peacekeeper model and the jet bike. If like me you've glued your rider in place before painting just do the bits you can see as natural shade will hide any parts you can't get your brush to. On the jet bike itself I'm mostly leaving this green other than the weapon underneath. A couple of pipes running along the side and the seat behind the rider. Once you've done all of that your model should look a little something like this. Now we're going to add a spot colour to the model with Evil Sun Scarlet by Citadel. A spot colour is something that pops out of a model's colour scheme when you first look at it. When painting an army it's different from painting individual models as you want it all to look cohesive but also stand out on the tabletop and that's what a spot colour does. Here we're going to pick out a few key areas to stand out. Painting a stripe across each breastplate also just gives a kind of military insignia look almost like this particular unit has these markings. It also breaks up the block of green across the chest. I've picked out the top of the shoulder pads any circular joints in the armour and the part on the back which could look like an energy charge for their anti-grav packs. I've also painted their eye lenses red too. Just take your time and remember you can tidy it up with the green if you make a mistake. Do the same type of thing on the peacekeeper and the jet bike rider. With the bike itself I need to break up that big block of green so I'm going to pick out the tips of the front and back wings, the very tops of the front foils and a few interesting areas. To get a neat line along the top it's best to just run the side of your brush along the part as this will stop you going over the edges. Once you've completed this step it's starting to come to life now and this should look a little something like these. Now you can skip this next step if you're just going for a pure speed choice but I like to add a little highlight to the red areas and I'm using Wild Rider Red again by Citadel for these. 
Here, it's as simple as just picking out just the uppermost areas of the red parts to give the illusion of light hitting them. We're not looking for any amazing blending here, just something to trick the eye, so don't worry about it too much. You can see the type of areas I'm choosing here. It's subtle, but just tricks you into thinking you've taken far more time with the models. Here I'm taking Ulthuan Grey from Citadel and painting the areas I want to lighten up for the next step. Areas like the wrist blade, the energy looking area on the arm, the tips of the energy gauntlet on the Peacekeeper and on the jet bike, I decided to pick out the engine coils and the exhaust to give it an energy glow rather than a metallic feel. Also, as we already have red on the model, I didn't want a fiery red and orange glow in the exhaust. I wanted something to contrast with the bike. Once you've done those few areas, we can move on to the next step. In this step, I take Baharoth Blue and we want to thin this down more than normal with a little water to make it more of a wash. We'll paint it over all of those areas we just painted grey, such as the wrist blade and the jet bike exhaust. You can see by thinning it down, it runs into the recesses and leaves a lighter colour on the high points so the engine will look like it's glowing a soft blue energy glow. It's also worth giving a little dry brush over the tips of the exhaust to make it look like it's glowing from the light. It's really coming together now and there's not much left to do. I take a lead belcher from Citadel and I'm going to use it to lightly dry brush over the weapons to make them look metallic. Lastly, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade Wash, also from Citadel, and carefully run it into the recesses on the chest plates, over the black under armor areas to help blend in any areas we missed, and also over the weapons. And there we have it, a super quick way to get them looking battle ready in no time at all. If this green colour scheme isn't for you, I tried a few other colour schemes and if you pause the video now, you can see the colours I used at each step on the screen. The method was exactly the same, so just substitute the colours out. I think you'll agree they look great for the time invested and if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video goes live, which will be a similarly fast and effective method for painting the Marauders.